Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Anna Marina from Bellissimo Plastic Surgery and MediSpa. Thank you for joining our Facebook Live. Tonight we have a guest that uh, we started working with uh, just a short time ago. This is Candice Paroli that we're going to introduce tonight, and she is a co-owner of Esthetique International, which uh, is an amazing place, and Candice specializes in many things, but what we're really interested in is that she specializes in scar camouflage. Um, she's also does some amazing 3D nipple areola uh, reconstruction using tattooing techniques. And so some of my patients that uh, I've done brush reconstruction on, I have sent her way. And so we, we really are just happy to have this sort of association with her and uh, she does some amazing work. So we wanted to bring her on tonight so that she could talk about how she got everything started and tell you about what she does. So welcome Candice and uh, we're happy to have you on tonight. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here and I'm very excited to be working with you guys. Um, I started in the industry uh, about 16 years ago and I was a professional makeup artist and then I gravitated uh, toward the cosmetic tattooing side. And it started with eyebrows, of course, and then I just kept taking more classes and getting certified in um, everything that you could possibly <laughs> cosmetic tattoo from brows to scalp. Um, like you said, I do a lot of areola reconstruction and of course, scar camouflage. Yeah, it's amazing. So when we met with you the first time, you were showing us some of the photos that, that you've done. It's been, it's truly amazing. So now you have an, uh, a main office here in Pittsburgh and you also have another one in South Florida and Boca Raton. So you go to, to both places, but tell us, you were telling me that night about this special technique that, that you were trained on. And so kind of tell us about how you came about, you know, with your technique and, and why it's so special. So um, I decided to learn uh, the 3D areola nipple reconstruction and scar camouflage when my, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine was diagnosed with breast cancer because I said, don't worry, like after you get through all of your surgeries, I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna fix you. And so our technique, once they have, once they have beat cancer, uh, we, can then go in and give them a realistic areola. Um, the old school way of doing it, it was sort of flat and look like a bullseye. When we're making uh, an areola, we're using like three to five pigments and it's just constantly blending and building. And that's how you get that 3D effect. Um, we're able to not only help breast cancer survivors, but women that may have undergone uh, breast surgery and they lost pigment or they just have some scarring so we can correct the areola as well as the scar camouflage. Yeah, some of the stuff that you show me is, is absolutely amazing. I mean, I've seen photos and I've had patients that have gone to, even back in California, that have, that have tried um, doing the nipple sort of reconstruction using tattooing and it really does look like a bullseye. And, you know, and the color fades. So the stuff that you've shown me is, is truly amazing. And, and so there's, there's also other ladies and even, and even gentlemen that, that suffer from something called Poland syndrome that, you know, basically for women, it's, it's uh, the breast doesn't develop. Sometimes they have problems with their pectoralis muscle and many times they don't even have a nipple at all. So, um, and, and there are gentlemen that have the same thing. So you can really help these patients who may not want to undergo a nipple reconstruction um, that I do, but the patients that I've done, you know, um, really do need, because when I, when anybody uh, reconstructs a nipple, it, it really looks like it's skin. I use the skin on the breast to build one at the nipple and the areola, but it still needs to be colored so that it matches the other side. And so, you know, you have to go through a lot of different pigments to sort of match it up. How do you match up? I mean, how, how what's the color scheme that, that, that you use? What's the technique that you use to match the color to the normal side? So I want to touch on what you just said. The nice thing about what we do is if you did the spinning um, and you, you created the nipple, you know, surgically in your office, 
once they're healed, they can then come to us and we can create the areola effect to finish it off. So they have two options. Either we can build build it from scratch or if they were with you first and you basically gave them, it's like a, you know, it's like a little nub, then we can finish it off. So with the pigments, they're very much involved. We do pigment swatches right over their skin and we do a nice blend. When we're making an areola, we typically use anywhere between three to five pigments and we even create the Montgomery glands, which are the little tiny white dots around the areola. Um, it's, it's very unique and it, it's kind of cool to see it all come together. Uh, and it, you know, it, it's about three to four passes and that means like going over the area about three to four times. Um, we do use numbing cream, so we do have, try to have them as comfortable as we possibly can during the procedure. Yeah, and so in a typical areola reconstruction, about how many, how many times does it take? You said three to four passes, but do, can you do all of that in just one time, one setting? Right. So if their appointment was today, their first appointment, we would see them back for their touch up in six weeks. For areola, it, they definitely need uh, a touch up. Right. What about in irradiated skin? Because that's always hard. You know, when I do my breast reconstructions, I usually use an implant uh, based uh, type of reconstruction. And so patients that do not have radiation, I'm, I'm more willing to do to create a nipple and an areola using that, the skin. But once they've been irradiated, I don't like to do that because the, the skin is fibrous. It's a little bit scarred down and the radiation right. changes. It also, the pigment is a little bit harder. So I'm sure that's harder for you because the pigment on that breast is a little bit darker. But mm -hmm. the biggest thing that, that I've known in the past is that tattooing is very difficult in scar tissue. So Patients that don't have the radiation, obviously, it, it's, it's easier for both of us. But if I'm not willing to do a tattoo or a, uh, an areola reconstruction, how much more difficult is it for you to, to create that three-dimensional lifelike look um, in an irradiated field? So that's a great question. And um, scar camouflage, uh, the procedure and the pigments have come such a long way over the past uh, 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have found is that pigment can live inside of scar tissue. And so the pigments that we use are certified organic pigments. They're actually oncologist approved. Um, if the, the scar is hypertrophic, we need to wait until it's healed a bit more. And sometimes with these scars, if they are raised a bit, we like to do one or two microneedling treatments mm -hmm to try to flatten it out. And that seems to do the trick. If they've had, and this does happen, multiple surgeries, if the, if the cancer's coming back and they've have had multiple surgeries, you know, that comes into play as well. It's like a waiting time in between because we want the skin to heal. Yeah, it's, it, it certainly does make it, you know, more difficult for us. I mean, obviously it's necessary, but, um, you know, it's always, it's always a challenge, but some of the stuff that, that you can do, I think for a lot of ladies, one of the biggest downfalls for, recre you know, for us as plastic surgeons to recreate a nipple is that that nipple always, it's either um, has good projection, but we can't build erectile tissue. So, right. you know, that nipple always appears erect. And so, mm -hmm. or over time, you lose some of that projection, so it flattens out a little bit. The nice thing about doing it from a tattoo standpoint is that it actually always looks like a nipple, and, but they don't, you can't see that through your clothing. So one of my, right. some of my patients that, you know, I warn them against that in bathing suits and t-shirts, sometimes they can see, even in a, in a summer day, they can see that reconstructed nipple. And so right. that, that can be some type of a deterrent. But now with the, you know, the advances in what you do that, you know, if they had a tattooed nipple, they really wouldn't have that issue at all. So it, it's amazing. I, it's something that I've always, you know, I've always been excited about. And I just haven't seen too many that have looked three-dimensional until I've seen what you've done. So right. 
my hat's off to you. I really am. Thank you. We try. <laughs> so, and I know that you've had a lot of, um, you know, uh, experience with burn patients, and that's near and dear to my heart as well, as I was a burn surgeon for a while and uh, for five years out in California. And so there's a lot of problems with um, tattooing, you know, and, and pigment changes. So it's the same kind of technique. I mean, you have to wait for those scars to kind of soften the same thing, right? Correct. And um, the person that I chose to train with was actually a burn victim. And she was a pioneer in this industry with scar camouflage. Um, and basically she was told by all these doctors there was nothing else she could do. Um, she had burns all over her face from the time she was two years old. And now she's completely renewed. She looks beautiful. Um, but yes, with the burn scars, we definitely do want them to be healed. The doc signs off on it. Um, depending on the severity, it could be two to three treatments. And we like to do those about five to six weeks apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so I think when we all think of, you know, severe burns, we always think of the um, thickened scars, the, the, the skin graft look, you know. But, you know, there's a lot of different types of burns and depths of burns. So, you know, I, it brings to mind a lot of patients that I've seen over the years that have had partial thickness, or we used to call second degree burns. So they can have a very, they don't have to have really thickened scars, but they, it's all pigment issues. So they can be hyper pigment, so they're kind of dark. So you have to kind of blend, but they can also be bleached. And right. so that's, you know, where you would really be able to sort of blend that in for them. And it's, it's yeah. it, 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 they can't do, you know, they can use all the makeup in the world, but especially if you have underlying dark skin, it's very hard to, to match that. Right. Yeah. Well, we definitely um, do a really nice blend with them. Uh, and then, you know, going forward with the scar camouflage, especially with uh, burn victims, they need to be careful in the sun. Um, the pigments are built to last. They're built to you know, go through the aging process. They're not gonna start yellowing or um, pulling an ashy undertone, but just with any type of skin treatment, whatever it may be, they should always practice safe sun. So we advise wearing um, an SPF of 45 or higher and one containing zinc oxide. Okay. And, and so as, and as you brought it up, you know, as, as we get older, our skin changes and, and things happen. So how often do you, I mean, do you find that you really need, even though they're built to last, do you find you just need to do some touch-ups every so often? Yes. So we typically see them back for a touch-up um, every, sometimes every year and a half to two years. If they have super oily skin, um, if they're, you know, sweating all of the time, it's more about like that year and a half, but, um, normally it's two years, sometimes even three years. Okay. That's amazing. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of patients are, are kind of, you know, are going to want to know I mean, what, what, so, so you had mentioned before, so they come in today, nipple real, aerial uh, reconstruction, you treat them there. How long does it take? What's what's that day like for them? And and what's it feel like afterwards? When they can when can they get back to activities and even showering? So take us through that. So um, a normal, uh, let's say it's for areola. They'll come in. Their paperwork will already be done before they get to the office because it will be emailed to them. Um, we will clean the area. We'll take our before pictures numb them, they'll numb anywhere from 25, 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and during that time is when we're going through the color swatches and making our pigment blend. Um, an areola procedure is anywhere from 45 minutes to one hour. They will leave with their aftercare um, ointment as well as instructions. Um, the downtime really isn't bad. With areola, they obviously want to wear a comfortable bra, loose-fitting clothing. Um, they will leave with a tagaderm bandage on, and then they just let that naturally fall off. They can shower every day. Um, I don't want them working out the first five days. I don't want them sweating because we don't want to speed that bandage from falling off. Once it falls off, they'll then start applying their ointment. 
Um, and then we just do the whole thing over again when they come back in five to six weeks. Yeah, that's... Scars are a lot easier that we don't have to put any tachyderms on. Um, they leave with the aftercare ointment. They, you know, can go and work. They don't have to, you know, cover their scars up, especially if it's like facelift scars, scars on their arms. Um, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. And if they are going to expose the, the treated area, whether it's for scar camouflage or areola to the sun, then they need to wear an SPF. Um, with the lollipop scars on the breast, we do not tagaderm those, but we put a little protective pad on before they leave the office and then they can take that off when they go home. So the other thing is that, um, that especially for a plastic surgeon, you know, we want to hide our scars as best we can. And sometimes that works for us, sometimes it doesn't. And, and sometimes we just fight the genetics of the patients. So somebody like you can really be uh, a plastic surgeon's best friend. <laughs> right, so, yeah. Especially if, you know, you know, we do a lot of facelifts. And so behind the ear, you know, that scar is kind of hidden, but sometimes with certain pigments, you know, it can turn white and that can be a, sort of a dead giveaway. So, um, and you've had a lot of experience treating that, especially down in Boca Raton, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, we do quite a bit of facelift scars in Boca. Um, and they're one of the easiest to treat. They're small. The skin on our face exfoliates so fast, like faster than it would on our arm. Um, but yeah, they, when we first do the facelift scar, it's actually a little bit pink and swollen when they first leave. Mm -hmm. And then as the days go on, it's going to slowly start smoothing out and the color will even out as well. So I always tell the patients just trust the process. It looks a little gnarly when we're done, but it always comes together. What's the timing for, you know, if I'm going to treat a scar and it's not hypertrophic, so it's not thickened, it's just, it's deep, it's depigmented. And so, you know, after a facelift scar, when would you want to sort of see them? Would you want it to wait six months, four months, seven months, you know? If, if the, if you sign off on them, um, I'm, they can definitely come in for a consult in four months. Um, like I said, if it is a hypertrophic, we want to wait a good six months, but typically the facelifts, uh, they're, they're not really hypertrophic. They, they heal very nicely. What other, what other procedures do you see? Can you do eyelids? Is it, is that a hard thing to do? You know, just under We the could eye. definitely do eyelids. That's actually pretty easy. Um, it's, it's a fast procedure too. Um, we can even do self-infliction scars. We, you know, we see those. Um, sometimes people have had car accidents and they have like a gash on their forehead. We can correct that. Um, lately I've been doing a lot of, uh, scar camouflage for people that are transitioning. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it is a female that's transitioning to a man and I'm um, correcting their scars, they, they had their breasts removed uh, or the opposite. So we're able to do that. And it's a nice experience. It's a rewarding experience for, for me to help them in that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And so, and what about, um, you know, I see a lot of ladies coming in with um, C-section scars that really bother them, you know, and, and, and again, that's a, that's a tough time to do any surgery with the hormones. And many times the C-section scars heal beautifully and they're just fine white lines. But do you find that, because those scars can get a little bit thicker. Right. Do you find that, um, do you have a lot of patients that want to come in after C-sections? I do uh, quite a bit, um, especially the women that have had emergency C-sections. Um, and what I ha usually we have like a treatment plan with them because we might have to do two or three microneedling sessions, let that heal, and then we can go in and do the scar camouflage. If it's just a nice clean incision, it healed beautifully, then we can take them right away and you know it, everybody's happy. Um, I wish they were all like that, but sometimes I'm seeing like these big chunky scars that go clear across the woman's lower abdomen. 
Right. And so, and, and they're different placements. I mean, most of the time, I think they do pretty well at putting them down below the, the clothing where we would put, you know, a, a tummy tuck scar. But sometimes, like you said, sometimes they do a vertical because of emergency situations. And those are the ones that are really tough to, you know, camouflage or to hide with a, with a bikini on or something like that. So, right. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty amazing. So what I see a lot as well, I think, is, are young people that, as you mentioned before, self-harm where, you know, they've done some cutting on their arms and forearms. And so they might have, t- you know, 12, 13, 15, 16 slash marks on their arm. And, you know, as a plastic surgeon, it's very difficult for us to really do anything with it. You know, if it's pigment, we try to, you know, bleach it out. If it's a little bit raised, we try to use lasers and, and my microneedling radio frequency uh, device works very well for that. But most of the time they've healed beautifully and they're just bleached scars. And so you've seen a lot of that as well, I'm sure. Yes. I mean, and not just on the arms. Uh, Sometimes we see them on the upper thigh. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, it's, this is a sensitive treatment for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So as long as their doc signs off, on it because by the time they get to us, they're in a good place. They're in a good headspace. Um, and so we try to have them as comfortable as we possibly can when they come to the office. It's a judgment free zone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, we are able to help self infliction scarring, whether it's on the arm, the leg, wherever it may be. Yeah. And, and, and your heart goes out to them, you know, and I see a fair amount of it and you, you try to do what you can because every day they look at it, it's just sort of a reminder of something yeah. they were able to move past and uh, kind of get on with their life. So it, we talked about that before. So it, it's interesting. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is um, kind of different is you were talking about scalp pigmentation. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I was seeing a fair amount, I don't see it as much anymore, but I was seeing a fair amount of, of men coming in that have had uh, hair transplants. And so they've had the, they have scars on the back of their scalps that, you know, where the, the hair follicles were harvested. And those scars uh, usually get wide. And so, you know, as a plastic surgeon, we try to re-excise them and close them and they're hard to do. But Talk to me about your scalp pigmentation, and I'm sure you could probably do either camouflaging or some of that to even hide some of those scars. Correct. So um, scalp micropigmentation, otherwise known as SMP, um, it's amazing. So we are literally mimicking the human hair follicle by implanting pigment and it's just little tiny movements. So it's very tedious work. It doesn't matter if you are a totally bald man, if you have had a transplant and you just want some density and to cover up the transplant scar, uh, alopecia, male or female, um, female density, male density, I have scalp micropigmentation. (laughs) Um, So a little backstory, I was training my business partner who is my boyfriend in tattoo removal. And he is a trainer in scalp micropigmentation. And long story short, he's not very good at tattoo removal. (laughs) (laughs) But, (laughs) But, um, my students were hanging over me with their phones when I was teaching and there's like lights and they posted it on Instagram and I saw my scalp and I was aware of this. And I said, is, is that what it looks like? It looks like seaweed on a rock. Like, why isn't anybody telling me? So I ended up getting the treatment and he, he trained me, he certified me in the treatment. So Um, We're quite busy with scalp micropigmentation. Um, We do it in the Pittsburgh office, Boca, and we have two offices in Egypt. Um, And we we treat everybody. It it doesn't, 50% of the world is having issues with some type of hair thinning, not just balding, but hair thinning. And so, you know, it's just amazing what we can do with it. It takes years off of men and women. I mean, I helped a guy, he was gluing on a hairpiece for years by himself and he's very physical. He likes to stay fit. 
it was just a lot of maintenance for him. And on top of that, he had alopecia on the side of his head. So by the end of the treatment, he was just ecstatic. He threw the hairpiece in the trash can. He said, I'm never doing this again. Right. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's just a super awesome treatment. And we're so excited about it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's something I think that's coming more to the forefront that um, it's not just men. There's a lot of women. And so I know from all of my intake uh, information, when I see a new patient, that box for hair thinning is checked more times than not. And, you know, and as, as we get older, especially for women, they're going through a lot of hormonal changes throughout their life. And um, so I can imagine, you know, that it's, it's something that, you know, guys have always been a little self-conscious about, but certainly women, and it was never really brought up that women had this issue until probably in the last decade or so that it was, you know, women were taking some of the same medications like, Propecia and some of the stuff that men were taking. So this is something again that you can treat really is it one time or is it multiple times? Because it, it's so tedious, it'd be hard to, I guess, depending upon what you're trying to accomplish, right? Correct. So for a totally bald uh, male case, it's anywhere between three to four treatments. And we can do those five, we can do them every week or every other week. Mm -hmm. For three days, they can't get it wet. They can take a shower. We just don't want them shampooing their scalp. Um, and like I said, it's probably about four treatments. That's a totally bald male, even if they have a scar on the back from uh, the transplant. Density cases, it just depends. So if it's female density and there's um, thinning in the temples and maybe that middle part, that could be anywhere from three to five sessions. Male density is usually about three sessions. Mm -hmm. um, we also do something that's very unique. We can remove the botched work. And I do quite a bit of this. Uh, unfortunately, when things become popular, like the treatment, mm -hmm. um, sometimes people are not getting the proper training or they're just rushing through the procedure. I remove botched scalp micropigmentation at least five times a week. Wow. Um, and we do this with a non-laser tattoo removal method that we developed. Um, I have patients that fly in as far as Virginia. And as you know, we're in Pittsburgh. Wow. That's, that's amazing because, you know, it, it, that's true. And people, something new comes along. Everybody wants to sort of jump on board, um, you know, and so... You know, again, as we always preach, you know, you really have to do your homework and find out yeah. the background the, and the experience of the people doing those, those procedures. So, you know, a lot of people say they can do it, but, you know, you really have to look at how long they've been in practice and, or in business and, and kind of question them. And so um, I think it's great that you meet with people as well. Let them ask some questions. So definitely. Yeah. We always offer free consultations and, you know, we welcome that because it is an investment and it's time. It's time for both parties. So we want them to be confident in their choice. Yeah. And it's just nice now, you know, when I talk to patients about uh, certain things now with scars, I, I do a lot of dog bites and uh, traumatic scars and they, they always want to come in and, and see if I can make it go away and you know there's just no way to do that so you know this this has really helped me offer them just one more thing that they can at least consider again you know I can run through my my, my armamentarium of you know is it something that's a wide scar that I might just try to make you know more narrow for them and that's a surgical revision I try to stay away from those most of these traumatic scars you know people don't really want to go back through a surgery or something like that but you know is it is it uh, something we can do with a laser microneedling uh, microneedling and radio frequency but sometimes they just need to really just camouflage or add something or take away something that's really up in your alley. And so it, it's really, I can just tell you, I mean, I'm really excited about it because it really helps me take care of my patients better, knowing that I have one more person that can be, you know, that I can send them to and, and give them the options. So I think you're going to see, I, I've given your name out to about four or five patients in the last two weeks that Thank for you. just different reasons, but I think that I, I really believe in what you do. It's fantastic. Is any of this, do you take any type of insurance or is it, is it all fee, you know, cash for you? 
So with the breast cancer survivors, there is a document that they can fill out and send to their insurance company and they get a reimbursement. They actually passed this, I think in 1993. Um, and so we can definitely help them through that. We are looking into care credit as well. Um, we, ha we have something that we offer for our academy, for our students. So we'd like to also be able to offer that for our patients. Yeah, and that's fantastic. And I, and I just like to get them the information so that they kind of know and you know what to expect and and so but i really i really thank you and um i'm just i'm just so happy that we have this association going and i think it's going to get more and more um as as we go forward and and i want you to, to keep us posted on anything new that you're doing um but absolutely and i'll definitely get some feedback here pretty soon because uh you know i'm doing some more nipple reconstructions now and um we'll send them your way so but I just want to say thank you, and I hope that uh, a lot of that information gets out. And so both men and women realize there are lots of different uh, modalities available now for what might be something you might want to correct. And it doesn't have to be surgery. And um, this could be something with a pretty short downtime and really not a lot of, of um, pain or any type of discomfort. So. Thank you again, and I wanted to thank everybody for joining us tonight, and um, we'll see you again next month. Thank you.